This is Algebra 2, Unit 4, Lesson 7 on Mindful Manipulation of Percents. Now, in an exponential function, remember that things are growing by multiplying. And when you're dealing with exponentials, a lot of times your multiplier is going to be a percent. So what we need to do is make sure that we understand how to manipulate the percents based on our information. All right, so percents and phenomena that grow at a constant percent rate can be challenging, to say the least. This is due to the fact that unlike linear phenomena, the growth rate indicates a constant multiplier effect because we're multiplying every time. A linear is an additive effect. When you do a linear equation, remember, you add the same thing every time. But with a exponential, you are multiplying. And a lot of times, like I said, it will be a percent because constant percent growth is common in everyday life. Um, it's good to be able to mindfully manipulate percents, so we know where percents come from. Okay, so let's try a couple problems that, um, dealing with percents. Exercise one, a population of wombats is growing at a constant percent rate. So basically they're being multiplied each time by some percent. If the population on January 1st is 1027 and a year later is 1079, what is its yearly percent growth rate to the nearest tenth of a percent? Okay, so we're starting at 1027 and ending at 1079. So what we have to do is look at the percent change. All right, so we're looking at how much it changed compared to the original percent, or the original amount, sorry. Okay, so the percent change. Well, it uh, ended up being 1079, but it started at 1027. That is the change in the percent. And it started at 1027 in the amount. Okay, so if we work this out, we get 1079 minus 1027. Let me put that in my calculator. 1079 minus 1027 is 52. And then I'm going to divide that by 1027, and that will give me a percent divided by 1027. I get 0 0.050632.9 is my value. But remember, this is the decimal version of percent. So what percent is this actually rounded to the nearest tenth? Um, we would go how many decimal places? Well, we're going to multiply by 100, because that would be two decimal places. And that gives me 5.06%, which is approximately 5.1. All right, so this works out to be, multiply this by 100, you get point, or 5.0632, which is approximately 5.1%. So the change in the percent divided by the original times 100 will give you the percent rate of change. So this is 5.1%. So from 1027, you would go up 5%, 0.1% each time, and then you, but you would be at 5, 1079. All right, now to check that, if you wanted to do that, 1027 times, it's an increase of 5.1% over the year, so it would be 1027 times 1.051. Let's see if that works. 1027 times 1.051, because it's a percent increase, 100%, uh, technically 105.1%. There's the 1079. Now, it's off a little bit because we did round it, but you can see we did get 1079 when we did that, so our percent increase is correct. All right, for exercise two, now let's try to determine what the percent growth in wombat population will be over a decade of time. We will assume that the rounded percent increase found in exercise one and continues for the next decade. All right, so that was 5.1% for the decade. Okay, after 10 years, what will we have multiplied by the original population by rounded to the nearest hundredth? Show the calculation. Okay, so we are going up 5.1% each year and then for 10 years. Okay, but remember, each year it's actually increasing by 100 plus that because it's 1 plus this. All right, so it's actually going to be 1.051 because you're adding 100% each year. So you take 100% plus this, so we don't have to keep um, re-adding every time. All right, so it's 1.051 to the 10th power. All right, because we're multiplying it 10 times. So if I take 1.051, and I raise that to the 10th power, I get 1.6447, and it said to round it to the nearest hundredth, so it's going to be approximately 1.64.
All right, so rounded off is approximately 1.64. Okay, so if this is my growth rate over the 10 years, using your answer from A, what is the decade percent growth rate? Now remember, we added the 100% here because that adds it in each time. So if this is 1.64, how much did it increase? It actually increased by 64%. It's a 64% uh, growth rate each year um, if we were multiplying, because the 100 here is, so we don't have to keep adding it every time to do the percent. So the growth rate is actually 64%. Okay, so exercise three. Let's stick with our wombats from exercise one. Assuming their growth rate is constant over time, what is their monthly growth rate to the nearest tenth of a percent? Assume a constant size month. Okay, now again, we know it's 5.1% per year. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. We're starting out 1027, and then we're going to multiply a bunch of times per month and end up at 1079. All right, now we know over that time, that it's going to be 1.051 is what we multiplied by. All right, how many times would we have to multiply m month to do this? Well, we'd have to multiply it 12 times. Okay, so let's see if we can figure that out. We started at 1027. We're going to multiply each month 12 times. Okay, and we will end up at 1079. Okay. All right, now, we know that m to the 12th, when we multiply it out, will equal 5.1%, 5 .5 so 1.051. So we know m to the 12th is equal to 1.051. Okay, so if we know that will equal 1.051, how do we figure out what each month will be? Well, how do you un-exponent this, uh, so this, uh, what we type the 12th root? Okay, you can take the 12th root, or you can raise it to the 1 12th power, because power of a root member, you can do the 12th root like this. Or you can say, oh, well, let me root this out. So I take the 12th root of 1.051. So math key, number 5 is your other roots. 12, 1.051. And I end up with 1.004153. So that's approximately 1.00415. Okay, so if this is my growth rate, um, I can see that this is 100% plus this. So it's 1 plus 0 0.00415. So this is going to be a growth rate. Move your decimal point two places is going to be 0.4% per month. Okay, now the other way you could have done this um, when you do m to the 12th here, you could have also raised this to the 1 12th power. Because look what the power exponents do when you do the power. Remember power over root, because it would be the 12th root first time. 12 times 1 12th will equal 1. And I can do that that way as well. 1.05 to the 1 12th. That's another way of doing it. So m would be the same thing you'll get the same answer. So if you want to see it, it's the same answer. All right, so if I did 1.051 raised to the 1 12th, I get the same answer. Remember, because it's really a ex uh, fractional exponent is actually power over root. So you can do it either way. All right, exercise four. If a population was growing at a constant rate of 22%, every five years. What is its percent growth rate over a two-year time span? Round to the nearest tenth of a percent. Okay, so first, give an expression that will calculate the single year or yearly percent growth rate based on the fact grew, the population grew 22 percent in five years. Okay, now if you think about this for a second, you started out and went 22 uh, percent in five years. So that is an increase of 1.22 percent each year. Now, but that's over five years. So what would it be for one year? Well, it would be one-fifth of that time. So it would be 1.22 raised to the one-fifth. This would be the yearly multiplier. 
because it's 22% over five years, so one year of that would be one-fifth of the time. So the yearly multiplier would be one-fifth, 1 1.22 to the one-fifth. All right, so now use this expression to calculate the percent growth over two years. So this would be, one year would be 1.22 to the one-fifth, and then I want to multiply that twice. So I would take this whole thing and square it. Okay, now, power rule for exponents. What do you do with the exponents when you raise the power to a power? You multiply them. So this is going to be 1.22, 1 one-fifth times 2. Remember, this is 2 over 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 5 times 1 is 5. It's 1.22 to the 2 fifths. All right, so we can put that in our calculator and round it to the nearest tenth of percent. 1.22 raised to the 2 fifth power which is approximately 1.0827. Okay, and then so to the, um, this is actually 1 plus 0.0827. So what percent is this going to be? It's going to be approximately, rounded to the nearest tenth of a percent, is 8.3%. Because remember, this part is the percent growth. Round that part off to the nearest um, tenth of a percent. So this is going to be every two years. Okay, because we multiplied it twice. So 8.3% every two years. Over two years, not every two years. But yeah. Okay, all right. So you have to be really careful when you're doing your exponents on these. All right, let's look at one with a decrease of percent. Exercise 5. World oil reserves, the amount of oil unused in the ground, are depleting at a constant 2% per year. We would like to determine what the percent decline will be over the next 20 years based on this 2% yearly decline. Okay, so let's write and evaluate an expression for what we would multiply the initial amount of oil by after 20 years. Okay, so remember this is a decrease of 2% every year. So what are we going to be multiplying by to figure out what the decrease is? All right, now, so it would be 0.98 per year because it would be 1 minus 0.02% to get my value. So it's a, a percent decrease of 0.98. What's going to be left over is 98% of the oil. Okay, so, so it's 0.98 per year. All right, so... If we take 0.98, and that's per year, we're going to do it how many times? We're going to do it 20 years, 20 times. So if I go to my calculator, 0.98 raised to the 20th power is 0.6676 approximately. .6676 approximately. Okay, now... Use your answer to determine the percent decline after 20 years. But be careful, round to the nearest percent. All right, so we want to know what the percent decline is after 20 years. This means that there is approximately 66.8% left after 20 years. So how much has it declined? Remember, this one, when we do the 0.98, is how much is left, so how much has it declined? Well, if you have 100% to start with, and there's 66.8% left, what is going to be the decline? Well, it would be 100 minus 66.8. is about 33.2% left. So it's approximately, that is the decline. To the nearest percent, it would be 33%. There we go. Okay, so because remember when we do the decline here, we are actually counting what is left over when you do that. All right, so the action amount of decline will be the difference between these two values. Okay, so let's save exercise six for the next lesson. We'll go over that and then do the homework.